Hello, I'm Dr. David Levian, President, Chief Executive Officer and Board Chair of the American College of Healthcare Trustees and Principal in our consulting arm, Edge Healthcare. This is a short introductory course for hospital board members and administrators and educated lay people who want a general overview of how infection occurs. We are constantly bathed in the sea of microorganisms, of pathogens, including bacteria, viruses, and fungi, yet we are usually healthy. It's important to understand the dynamic relationship between the human organism and the invaders. Us humans are swimming in a sea of microorganisms on our skin and in every orifice, including the mouth and anus and vagina, even the alveoli, which are the terminal sacs of the lung, which were once believed to be sterile in the healthy person, have been shown using genetic testing to harbor microorganisms, even in health. The skin is a great barrier to infection, and many times people mistake colonization, which just means the presence of microorganisms on the skin, with invasive infection. We know we have invasive infection when we have the stigmata of it, including fever and chills and muscle aches and malaise and fatigue and signs such as a rapid heart rate, or later in the game, one may have mental obtundation and low blood pressure and even shock. There are laboratory manifestations of infection, including elevated white blood cell count with a left shift, which means primitive cells in the circulation. Interestingly, viral infection may be associated with a low blood count. There are other laboratory manifestations, such as an elevated erythrocyte sedimentation rate and C-reactive protein and more. Severe infection can result in systemic inflammatory response syndrome, or SIRS, with acute respiratory distress and even multi-system organ failure, with the organs fail seriatim. Of course, there are not infectious causes of systemic anti uh, systemic inflammatory response syndrome, an example of which would be pancreatitis. As, as depicted in this slide, there is a quasi formula such as such that the probability of infection is directly proportional to the number and virulence of organisms present, and inversely proportional to host resistance. And host resistance can be separated into systemic and local factors. Systemic factors would include immunocompromise from a variety of sources, such as malnutrition, defects in humoral immunity, which refers to antibodies, and defects in cell-mediated immunity, which refers to T cells. Other factors such as cancer, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and immunosuppressive drugs like those used to treat Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis and various types of arthritis can suppress the immune response. A very important concept is that the gastrointestinal tract from the mouth to the anus is an extension of the outside that traverses our entire body, and it is colonized with millions of bacteria that inhabit this realm without causing illness. This is analogous to the mil millions of bacteria that inhabit our skin, causing colonization but not invasive infection. Bacteria on our skin can cause invasive infection when the integrity of the skin is compromised by a burn or by trauma or by a surgical incision. Also, some bacteria like Staphylococcus aureus are more virulent than bacteria like Staphylococcus albus, but even the latter can cause infection when the field is compromised. 
When one makes a surgical incision, it's important to use good surgical technique because crushed skin or beveling your scission or picking up the skin traumatically with the forceps can devitalize it, can interfere with its blood supply, and hence compromise the local aspects of host resistance. Similarly, leaving too much suture on top of a knot can be a nidus for infection, because we know that foreign body lowers the number of organisms required to make an invasive infection. In the GI tract, suppressing non-virulent organisms with antibiotics can cause more virulent organisms to overgrow and cause disease. An example would be Clostridia difficile colitis, which can even progress to pseudomembranous colitis with sepsis and sepsis syndrome and multisystem organ failure and death. Inadequate blood supply to the gut can otherwise allow innocuous inhabitants of the bowel to cross the bowel wall into the blood supply to cause sepsis. And there's a theory that this is the engine of irreversible shock. That is, one can pass the point of no return where it's no longer possible to salvage the patient. We at the American College of Healthcare Trustees believe it's important for healthcare professionals, including board members and hospital executives and department heads and other leaders who are neither physicians nor scientists to understand the big picture, to get helpful concepts or ways of organizing their thoughts in order to more effectively lead. That's why we are providing overviews in various aspects of our curriculum to supplement the details, which can be found in standard textbooks and scientific papers. You can become a fellow at www.faCht.org.